actually. Probably good. Alright, so go ahead and mask her on. Clear! Go ahead. Start. Yeah. Nothing. So for most of you guys who have been a part of my channel for a little bit now, uh, the whole 26 of you, uh, you guys know that I'm mostly a variety channel and that I do a variety of video games, largely being postscriptum at the moment and War Thunder is my main focus. But this channel will be making a shift because it's been my plan, my goal to have mechanic um, inspired videos and building videos also a part of the video games because those are two things I really love to do and also this is part of the f reason why my video creation is so sporadic because I am going to school right now and part of that schooling for becoming an aviation maintenance technician is involved in also uh, what I'm doing right now which was building a power plant. Um, completely tearing it down and then rebuilding it and this is what this video is going to be about uh i hope you guys really enjoy it i'm going to go over the pictures what the photos mean what happened during the building process and then uh, i have a video of the run-up at the end uh i just wanted to let you guys know that the video is good the whole channel is going to make a shift and there's going to be different videos coming out here and there and that i'm i'm <laughs> I, I swear I'm not lazy, I just don't have a lot of time on my hands and I am doing the best I can with the most minimal possible. I mean to be honest, the end goal is to have a video series about making an R80 Tiger Moth. Uh, I kind of, it's a dream of mine to build that and also bring forth tips and tricks about building, home, making home builds and just doing the whole home built thing. That would be really cool. So the engine me and my partner did was the Lycoming O235C2C, oh, meaning opposing. Uh, like, uh, usually it's known as a boxer engine by most, and uh, 235 meaning the cubic inch displacement. Not a very large engine at all, actually it was the smallest engine that we were all were working on. This one was a little bit more difficult since it was older, and Lycoming has pretty much stopped all support for this engine. This is an engine you would find in like a 60s, early 60s version of a Cessna 150, uh, 152. The engine itself maybe produces about 100 to 125 horsepower. So I'm not sure about our engine, being how old it is, and all the antiquated devices in it, if it can still support that much horsepower. And by antiquated, I mean just that's got a lot of old parts in it still. I bet it's losing compression in some places we did run compression checks and they were fine it was within tolerance but I'm not sure that this engine can put out what it could put out before when it first came out on the market when we started with the engine we removed the accessory plate uh, case and the oil pan first and then we moved on to the cylinders with this engine you have to make sure that the cylinders are top dead center because all of the uh, that the pistons are top dead center before you take the cylinders off because all of the cylinders have a little skirt and that skirt goes down to the crankcase and when they're bottom dead center the bottom of the pistons are technically in the crankcase at that point so when you pull them out all your rings pop off of your piston and then get stuck in the crankcase and this turns into a very difficult moment you don't have the right tools I mean most of the time what you have to do to make sure you don't destroy the ring or the piston is you have to split the crankcase at that moment and that's even more difficult to do when you still got a piston on uh, the crankcase requires a special tool to be pushed out uh, usually you keep your push rods in on your crankshaft and then you have a push tool that's connected in to the 
studs which go through the crankcase for this one you have about six and then plus two bolts that also extend to the crankcase and then just the general uh, crankcase bolts that go all the way on the outside of the crankcase. They connect to the studs and then you push on the rod and you use the uh, crankshaft as the, pretty much your pusher device to push the crankcase in half. And that's what we did also to just pull it apart anyways. It's much harder when you've got that piston still in there and the ring stuck back in the crankcase. Um, so you got to make sure that when you're taking off all the cylinders, all pistons are top dead center. Ooh, the problems that we ran into with this engine when we took it apart is we found a broken piston. It had been sheared off at the skirt. All the oil retainer ring and the oil scraper ring, um, which are the two lowest rings of the piston, were chewed and eaten up by the engine and actually went through the oil pump. I don't know how the oil pump gear survived. And all the metal shillings were just sitting at the bottom of the uh, oil pan. Uh, this is a wet sump oil pan, which means that the oil pan is interconnected with the engine. Uh, most aircraft oil pans uh, or oil systems are dry sump, which means that the oil reservoir is separate from the engine case and that's for extra cooling that so you can put the oil back through a cooler and then uh, it can come out of the cooler and be then temped there at the out part of the cooler so you know that the oil cooler is actually working and you know the oil temperature that's coming back into your engine you want to know the oil temperature coming back in because that is that shows you how much heat is being dissipated and also how much heat that that oil can still take coming back into the engine and then being summed back out to the reservoir. This is usually for larger engines. Uh, mostly smaller engines use a uh, wet sump, which is what's like in most cars, uh, mostly what you see, but most aircraft actually don't have a wet sump system. Uh, so the engine uh, had that going for it plus for some reason some of the studs were broken uh, for I, d I don't know uh, you know just a completely unrelated thing make sure that you check the torque values and you make sure that you're actually looking at the right studs and right bolts for those torque values uh, most manuals at least my manual had a diagram <laughs> with a picture showing the numbers that correspond with the torque values on the graph. Um, yeah, something to pay attention to so you don't break your bolts, uh, especially since some of these bolts, the one bolt alone is can be 25 to $60. Just one. It's one bolt, a through stud was $75. I mean, like I said, this engine lacks support, so the piston itself that we had to replace was six hundred dollars four hundred for the piston and then another two hundred for all the piston rings it kind of bad um and then the new piston also was out of balance so that was fun to deal with too uh so was the prop when we put it on you'll see that you'll see the case rattling when the engine starts running um the next step after we pulled everything out clearanced it uh checked it torqued it it was to put it all back together with this particular in uh, engine, one of the most interesting things was putting back together the push rod assemblies and putting on the rocker arms. Most like homing engines use a hydraulic tappet or a self setting rocker arm where the rocker arm is already set. You just put it in, um, you make sure that your clearances are good and you're free to go as long as the clearances are within tolerance. But with this one, you have to set the clearance of the tolerances, which means you have to first load one side, and loading one side means you put them on compression stroke, and then you put your rocker arms down to the lowest value possible sitting on that, that so that they load, they're constantly loading the engine on that one side. Then you go to the other side, and you go to compression stroke for that side, bring the compression stroke, all the way up to the 
top center of the cylinder and then you set your tap of clearance then on that compression stroke and you have to do that for each cylinder after that so you go one three two four at least that's the um, piston order in the same order of the firing order interestingly enough uh, once you have that set you're pretty much good to put on everything you need for back onto your engine this is after you have put the cylinders on you put the pistons back in put the piston rings back on piston rings are really interesting we put on the accessory case uh, we've safety wired the oil pump put on the accessory case safety wired our um, sump inlet for our wets up oil pan system and put that on together then came time for the accessories such as the engine mount the magnetos the um, carburetor itself this is a carbureted engine it had a small throat carburetor uh, it's called an updraft carburetor uh, I believe that is a marble shoveler or what people call the slobberers because they tend to leak a little bit and when we were putting it together everything went off without a hitch pretty much uh, it's pretty it's a pretty simple system they did a good job of making sure that, that it was uh, mechanic proof you couldn't really break anything or you couldn't get anything wrong the magnetos uh, the Bendix magnetos you what you do is you time them through a tooth window and uh, with that tooth window you make sure that it's just lined a certain color tooth is lined up with the window put it on and it should be timed you do have to do timing checks to make sure that you're timed within the correct parameters I believe that it was 10 degrees before top dead uh, before compression stroke top dead center that the first ignition which is the left one or top one was supposed to go off and then the right one is supposed to go off after 8 degrees before 8 degrees top dead center compression stroke so you time it to that using a mag light it's a pretty simple system you hook up the P leads you ground it to your engine and then they'll open up when your uh, magnetos are open and that's what you time it to so you look at how many degrees your engine is turning before compression um, and you make sure that it's within that zone usually it's 12 to like 5 degrees um, as long as it's under 15 degrees before top dead center compression stroke your engine should run um, but at the same time should not run in an airworthy style. Uh, after that, we got our prop flange on, we got it hooked up to the run stand, and we ran it. Uh, it took us a little bit because the starter was uh, not grounded completely. It, there was someone had forgot a nut or thrown away a nut that needed to be on there, and so the primary lead had to be, be between two nuts. And we only had one nut. We didn't know. It kept uh, arcing. It took us about three hours to actually find it out. Sometimes, guys, look for the most simple thing. Because the most simple thing is what's going to keep you in the loop. And <laughs> if you don't look at it, you're going to be looking at the batteries. You're going to be looking at the ground. You're going to be looking at everything but just literally the most simple lead connection in the whole system. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys enjoy the run-up, too. Oh, please. Back up. Oh, yeah. Stop there.
how did it feel from in there, dude? Yeah. Like, like you, you should have, you should have seen how it felt in there. I felt like it was gonna rattle apart. Ours ran, it felt great. Well, so the problem that we we have. I bet it wasn't fun the first time. Claire. <laughs> I didn't tighten that up enough. That was my bad. guys for watching and I hope you really enjoyed this video uh, it would really be helpful to me if people were to comment and were to reply on my videos tell me how they think I'm doing and maybe give me a little criticism I'm not a bash to it uh, I'd like to thank endemic sound and their artists for the music uh, hunting for sunsets Harper Ray Lindsay Abraham and Von Meyer were the artists that I had in here and I will have a link to endemic sound uh, in the description below and I also wanted to uh, make sure that people knew that the B Plaza song I don't think it is copyrighted so I have to definitely give credit to Nintendo Studios and the Me Plaza and I think that's about it you guys have a great day all right